for an abundance of the fruits of the earth and for peaceful times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick, the suffering, for those who are held in captivity, and for their safety and salvation, let us pray to the
then they departed from there and passed through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know it. For he taught his disciples and said to them, The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And after he is killed, he will rise on the third day.
as we, can, as we commemorate him and we look upon the things that he has taught. We see that prayer and fasting and forgiveness and all these things that, that are taught to us by Christ, all these things are necessary for us to gain eternal life. All these things are necessary as we, as we climb that ladder of divine ascent. Those of you who are reading the book, I've heard from a number of you who not only are enjoying the book, but also as well realizing how, maybe once again, how, how hard, how difficult at times the Christian life can be. Especially when we not especially when we're not living in we're not living in a monastery, we're not living in we're not living or we're not living in a total Orthodox village where the whole world around us is living the same lifestyle that we are. But we're living in a world with, with many with many difficulties, many temptations, many things tugging at us and trying to pull us away from Christ. Making that, making ascending that ladder more and more difficult. But it can be done. We have the strength. We have, we have it because it comes through Christ. We cannot do it on our own. But if we do it through Christ, if we pray, if we fast, if we believe, then we have the strength. The most powerful words, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Lord, I believe. Lord, I want to follow you. But there is still that, that little part of me that is having difficulty. Help me with that. We all have that in our lives as well. Each and every single one of us has, is either going through it, has gone through it, or give it time, you will. But we all have that. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. We can all cry that to the Lord as well, and He will hear us and He will help us if we believe. We have two more weeks left in the great fast, and then we and then we enter into Great Holy Week. Let us make these last two weeks efforts of prayer and fasting. All of us together, praying for one another, praying, praying that we not only that we make it through the great fast, but everyone around us, everyone around us does as well. That our whole parish family comes together in prayer and fasting, especially as I know we have. But let us really, as we said, as as we're running the race, as we're running this, as we're going through this journey, where do you put your greatest effort in? When you see the when you see the finish line, when you see where you are going, this is when you, if you're a runner, not that I am, but if you see a runner that when do they put on the sprint? When they start to see the finish line, when the end is coming, that's when they put on the sprint. That's when they give it all they have so they can finish. Maybe tired, maybe happy, but they spend every little less part of their energy getting to the finish line. We're at that time. We're at that time to begin to spread. We're at that time to come towards, come towards the end of the great fast. Two weeks left to go. Let us, let us finish the journey. Let us complete the journey. Let us complete it with faith. Let us complete it with, with prayer. Let us complete it with fasting so that all of us can say together that yes, Lord, I believe. Amen. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus Christ. Let us all say with our mouths and with our minds, let us say.
their petitions in part, how their sins committed, deliver their because of human frailty. Let your prayers and charitable deeds be acceptable before the throne of your majesty. Protect them from all their enemies, both visible and invisible, from every misfortune, distress, or affliction. Deliver them from illness, round the mouth, and long life. Let us say, O Lord, hear us and graciously. Have mercy.
brothers and sisters in Christ, I ask you for your forgiveness.
lived in this world and gave us commandments for salvation. He released us from the delusions of idolatry and brought us to the knowledge of you, true God and Father. He procured us for himself as a chosen people, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. And he purified us with water, he sanctified us with the Holy Spirit. He gave himself as a ransom to death by which we were held captive, being sold into slavery by sin. He descended into the realm of death through the cross that he might fill all things with himself. He loosed the bonds of death and rose again from the dead on the third day. For it was not possible that the author of life should be conquered by corruption. In this way, he made the way of the resurrection of the dead of all flesh. Thus he became the first fruits of the harvest and the part of the firstborn of the dead, that he might be first in all ways and among all things. He is sending into heaven and sits at the hand of the majesty on high, and he shall come again with glory to judge each man according to his deeds. He left these memorials of the saving passion, these which we have set forth according to his command. For when he was about to go to his voluntary and memorable death and death, on the night in which he gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread and was all holy, all pure hands, and presented it to you, O God and Father. And he gave thanks and blessed it and sanctified it and broke it. And he gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you, for the remission of sin.
We all think to all that kind for you know what we're going to do with the scenes. Deliver the city of the Lord in every city and countryside. From famine, plague, earthquake, flood, fire, sword, foreign invasion, and civil war. And remember among the first, O Lord, our holy ecumenical patriarch, for the following of the English bishop of Constantinople, and our most reverend, my father and brethren, preserve them to your holy churches in peace and safety and honor and in health for many years, so that they may faithfully dispense the word of your truth. Remember all your
some time of fellowship. Uh, all of those fellow <coughs> members of the senior ACRY, uh, your, your monthly meeting will be held today, so please listen for the call to begin the meeting. Uh, this coming Wednesday, 7 p.m., Literature to present the five gifts. Uh, this coming Friday at 9.30 a.m., once again, Liturgy of the Precinct by Gifts. Please come out. If you have not been to um, the Liturgy of the Precinct by yet uh, this Lenten season, uh, there's only, between Wednesdays and Fridays, there's only four more to go, two each week. So please come out, uh, please come out and, and join us for these, uh, for these beautiful Lenten prayers. Uh, congratulations and God's choices blessings are offered to Brendan Patrick on his entry into the Orthodox faith this morning uh, through the sacrament of First Nation. We also, um, we also congratulate his, his sponsor, Ann Wright. Um, and uh, after the liturgy, everyone will have a chance downstairs to, uh, to officially welcome uh, Brandon into, uh, into the faith through the, uh, through the entire parish family. Uh, please don't forget uh, in your offering, in your offering box, the annual uh, gift for the patriarchal events in support of the uh, ecumenical patriarchy. Uh, again, this was a gift established. Uh, this is the diocesan tradition established by his eminence of the Metropolitan Orestes uh, back in the late 1930s in thanks to the patriarchy uh, for accepting our diocesan faithful back into the fold of orthodoxy. Uh, please try to have your, excuse me, if you've not already done so, Please try to have your offering in by no later than uh, the Sunday, the 28th of April, which is Palm Sunday. Uh, there are two, well, two weeks this week and next Sunday until uh, this Sunday and next Sunday for the uh, food drive, the Social Concerns Ministry uh, food drive for Manna Food Center of Montgomery County. Uh, it ends next Sunday, so if you have not yet brought anything in, um, please bring something in if you have already brought something in. Please bring a little more. Uh, it's part of our, it's part of our uh, effort of almsgiving as a parish family. Uh, and then sometime during the week of April 21st, uh, those uh, those food uh, food items will be delivered up to uh, will be delivered up to Matt. Uh, don't forget as well coming up in uh, coming up in two, two weeks. Uh, yeah, about two weeks. Uh, the Excuse me, the uh, annual cleaning day on last for Saturday, Divine Liturgy, that morning will begin at 9 a.m. Uh, and this one we can get cleaning started maybe around 10 30 or so. Um, we'll have light breakfast here. We'll also have lunch for those who uh, for those who are here. Uh, please sign up on the sign-up sheet downstairs. Uh, it's uh, on the bullet board or on the calendar sheet. It's it's on one of it's downstairs near the bullet board. Uh, please sign up, and if you can't be here that day, but would like to come in another day to accomplish some of the tasks that are there, uh, please put your name down and let me know when you're coming, and I'll be more than happy to open the doors for you. Uh, also, as well, sign up sheet on the bulletin board for uh, those who would like to uh, come into the church from between Holy Friday evening and Holy Saturday morning. Uh, I think there's only like two hours left. Uh, remaining, and I think those hours are five to six and six to seven uh, in the morning uh, on Holy Saturday morning to come and read the Psalms. Um, I think this is just about the quickest we've gotten this far um, on on the uh, on the sign-up sheet. So, like I said, there's two hours left. Uh, who would like to fill those two hours? Um, you could take one person, could take both of them. Uh, two different people could take each one. Uh, however, you, however you decide to do it, but uh, we need those uh, we need those two hours filled. Uh, for our high school and college graduates, the class of 2024, uh, I need to know by no later than Sunday, the 19th of May, all your graduation information, because Sunday, the 9th of June, is going to be excuse me is going to be graduate Sunday. We're having to move things a little uh, a couple weeks earlier this year than normal. So uh, please make sure you get your graduation from me, or if I can put it this way, moms of the graduates, please make sure that their graduation information comes to me, and uh, so that this way we can properly honor our graduates on Graduate Sunday. And then five, finally this morning on Sunday, May the 12th, which is Thomas Sunday, it's also Mother's Day, uh, we will be having our annual Mother's Day breakfast. 
uh, spearheaded by our chef Tim, uh, the, the breakfast chef. And uh, so we will, uh, so there's a chime sheet downstairs uh, for the items that we need and also as well for, uh, for uh, assistance. Uh, this is only for the gentlemen of the parish. Ladies, it is your day or to enjoy your day. And uh, again, as always, you are not allowed anywhere near the kitchen. Uh, bouncers will be posted to make sure that uh, none of the ladies uh, enter into uh, enter into the kitchen on that day. Prayer and fasting is something that we need to make not only this a part of our lives during this Lenten season, which is most important, but also as well throughout the entire year. That idea of prayer and fasting always go together. As Orthodox Christians, it's kind of like you can't have one without the other. Prayer and fasting go so much together because that's what boosts our spirit, and as the Lord said, that's what helps conquer the passion. So especially during these next two weeks, run the sprint. Run the sprint towards the finish line. Pray, fast. If you've been, if you've been doing it all through, the, all through the Lenten season, maybe these next two weeks may be just a little bit harder if you find the strength to do it. If you haven't been, this is the time. This is the time before we, before we reach the finish line to make sure that your prayer and fasting have, have are, are in, that you've you applied your full strength to them. And final word on uh, confessions, once again, I, I forgot to write that down, but it just came to me that those who remember that after divine services, confessions are heard, uh, please let me know if you can ahead of time this way and know how many are coming, how many you can pray for. But also as well, thank you to those who have called me during the week uh, to make appointments during the week, whether it's morning, an afternoon, or an evening. Uh, I am here for you. Give me a call. Make an appointment. Come down to the church. Have your confession heard. Sometimes, too, it's a little less pressure when you don't know that there's a whole lot of people behind you. So please, call. Make an appointment. Last, uh, and once again, the final day for appointment. Uh, May the blessing of the Lord for His grace and His love for mankind be upon you. Now and ever. Egypt.